hello viewers and subscribers welcome once again my new screencast uh, previous screencast i already discussed about how you can start the angular and TypeScript based um, web applications and the possibility that those application was uh, uh, the integration between the your geo and non geo geo part i mean in geo part means your all the map functionalities uh, with the different different uh, map map apis like javascript api like open open layers or leaflet apis or google map apis how can you integrate those maps into the your web pages or your web applications you if you saw the the application if you if you already saw the, the my previous screencast like 35 um, dot one up to 35 dot 40 it was based on the angular and typescript based uh, with the geo and non-geo functionalities that means here if you close look the angular is for our font and the font and technology to make your gui and typescript you for the for your 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 server side i mean it is closer to the your your gui 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 UI service developments. That's why I, I, I title like that way the Angular and TypeScript based application development. And those the Angular and TypeScript based uh, developments, uh, geo and non geo functionalities, which based on based on the the released uh, based on the released uh, Spring Boot uh, REST API or Spring Boot Data or Spring Boot Data JPA JPA based implementation. That's why I'm trying to do this new new screencast. It will be the multiple screencast uh, to develop those um, REST API. Then I can call those REST API into the into the into um, uh, those API into the Angular and TypeScript based uh, font and development. That was the idea. So if you saw these pictures like that one, there is a lot of geo functionalities. That means you have a lot of the the line geometry and the polygon geometry, point point geometry, and you have a lot of the geo processing text. That's why it, it was the multi uh, multiple uh, skin cast, and it was the combination of geo and non geo functionalities. Let's have a start. How the 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 screen cast number 36 how can i start how can you implement the, the, those rest apis and then how can you integrate those how can you publish those rest endpoints or the rest services and the call the rest service into the your, your angular and typescript based font and development frameworks that's the step you see that just follow the my previous skin cast 35.1 up to 30.40 there is a detailed discussion how i start this development how the internationalization localizations and and even though how you integrate the, those libraries and how can you build those those geometries into the maps and then how can you build all the maps and all the all the forms and even different type of forms and validation just follow the uh, the screen cast number 35 up to 1.3540 if you see the the 35 dot up to 3440 there is a detailed discussion you see the the really really big forms you can register the 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 you oh let's say uh, you have the background for the information i this is the application was planned like that as, as a city uh, city governments need to maintain their their buildings information their plots information their float information and then unit information and with all the geo functionalities if you see them one of the example like one the city city registration office look like the registrar they try to register the the plots and then there's all necessary information in the plots and the type plot name plot type and ids and this is the the location of the plot you can digitize this this location of the maps and then you store this coordinate point into the into the your database that's why i said this is the really complex one of the complex and enterprise level application to integration between the geo and non geo functionalities just follow and that one the the close look on this 35 number and you get the clear idea so if you see the pictures like these forms you have a crude operation like you have a have create create new 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 plots and you can edit it new plots and you can delete the new plots and even though some some form settings reset and cancel functionalities and the, this is the the geo part 
then you can digitize the respective plot coordinates points and build the polygons based on the, the your, your your polygon and then after that this, this information need to be stored into the into the your backend server and that's that case depending on the backend server for this case i use postgis and with the extension with postgis then then postgis postgis and postgis extension has a, has a special functionalities to to manipulate or to to maintain or to make a geo processing task between the your you your geometries or your processing you you geo objects or geo processing task that's a good uh, good idea so this is the one of the example what I did in the uh, screencast number 35 and just just follow that one. So this is the screencast number 36 that's I'm now continuing what was the idea because we try to build the our rest endpoints to to call those endpoints into the into our font and technology what we are using angular and typescript and that's why and do the respective crude operations and how can the how can we build those those endpoints how how what are the possibilities to generate those endpoints what are the more the, the the specification or concept or ideas how can you start those those endpoint developments because you know there's a many that's why i said here there's a why and how should we use the spring data jpa and J, uh, the Spring Data JPA and then JPA, then ORM, Hibernate basically, and database servers. So you see the flow. So we have the database, then we have a Hibernate object relational mappings, and then come to the play as a JPA, Java Persistence API, and then after the abstraction level, that one, that one, that is the Spring Data JPA. So if you follow the 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 the, the models, the the flow, you see the non-SQL databases. Uh, DBs and SQL DBs. So non-SQL DBs mean means MongoDB or Cassandra, Dedix, Gamefire or Kushbos or, or any any other any other non-SQL based database or object based databases. And then SQL databases mean MySQL, uh, Postgres or the what we, what I am using these projects and uh, maybe Oracle or DB2 or from X depending on that. Uh, after if you have a backend server selected as as you as far you uh, you know. If you have a like a SQL based database, if you have a ORM really clear and clear defined ORM models and you can pass this model any any SQL based database, doesn't matter it is Postgres or doesn't matter it's MySQL or doesn't matter it's Oracle. It is same syntax but but uh, it is it is the same. That means you have your ORM models, then you can pass any any backend server, an SQL backend server. If it's not an SQL based, there is a specification for own database and ORM mapping concept or tools or, or way of doing. So you see, there's a backend server, and then you have in the top of the backend server there is the ORM object relational mappings, and and this is the Hibernate part, and this is the um, the Java Persistence API, and then after that the Java Persistence API, Spring Boot Data JPA. That's why I'm trying to give it to you the theoretical discussion, the theoretical idea concept, and I will follow the all steps from the from the backend server from the ORM and and JPA and after the JPA Spring Boot JPA data JPA and that means uh, the basically what I try to do here I will expose my all endpoints all the rest services uh, what we need for the our plot registration our building registration our user registration our user role registration or flow registration or unit registration that's all the endpoints are exposed based on the technology a top technology like spring data jpa so that means it's being data JPA is consuming the JPA technology in the down level and JPA is consuming the down level there is a there is a ORM uh, it doesn't matter it's hibernate and then there is a the down level there is a depending which which backend server you try to base is object based the backend server or is a SQL based a backend server so that means a SQL based databases or non SQL based databases depending what your project requirements how this works I show, I try to uh, summarize here little information no repository pattern so if you are in the into this structure like you have a jpa model you have a ORM models you have a respective data backend server and then you have automatically has the default repositories i will discuss a lot discuss those things into the later later part of the presentation so you get the crude operation the basically that's what i need if you try to make one 
register one one address or a user or a user role or plot or doesn't matter 